Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I want to follow up on that um, and a number of the other questions that have been asked in the hearing today, and that is uh, the detail. Uh, the, the administration submitted a significant proposal last summer about how to approach reform of issues in the financial world. Uh, the Volcker rule was not in that proposal last summer. I assume that part of the reason that we did not have it was because uh, it was a legislative proposal that did not have, uh, and, and that we don't have the detail yet for the legislative language as to how to actually make the definitions. And my question, uh, Chairman Volcker, is drawing bright lines between the permissible and impermissible activities on market making or customer facilitation or proprietary trading is uh, going to be very difficult. And some people say impossible or unworkable. Uh, if the government makes it too difficult for banks to take positions, then there will be less liquidity in the market and the corresponding impacts on uh, capital formation and, and uh, robust economic activity. Uh, do you expect that we will receive some specific legislative language so that we can understand specifically what we are talking about or what, what the proposal is with regard to proprietary trading and the other details of what is being discussed here? <laughs> I, I think that's Mr. Wallen's responsibility. I delegated. So you talk to us. In, uh, <laughs> so you, you give us the theory, right, and uh, Secretary Wallen will give us the detail? <laughs> Senator Cable, I think an uh, important question, obviously. Like the other proposals that we first articulated in June in the form of our white paper, we will send uh, legislative draft legislative proposals uh, to the committee for your all's consideration. Um, I think on these things, like on lots of other pieces of our proposal, we will want to um, embed in statute the principles that we've articulated with some detail, but again, like an awful lot of banking law and a lot of the proposals, lots will be left to the regulators to implement in very detailed ways. So that's really the process forward. Uh, we are keen to work with you. We're currently working internally and uh, with the regulators to craft language uh, that you can consider uh, and that we would want to work with you on, obviously, um, as you move forward. Uh, and then inevitably on these kinds of things, uh, making judgments at the margin trying to figure out how to uh, implement the principles in particular contexts is what um, regulators do in really the full range of banking laws that are on the books or that are being proposed in this current discussion. Uh, I understand that difference in role between um, policy making and then the regulatory interpretation, although there's always a conflict there, a, a, a push and a pull or a tug in terms of what kind of specificity we need, but am I to understand you, uh, Mr. Secretary, to be saying that uh, you would expect Congress to pass legislation implementing the idea, but that we would not really have a good feel for what it, what, what proprietary trading means when we pass this legislation? No, no, and Senator, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave that impression. I think we would want to specify it uh, and have a rule that's clear that regulators could then implement, uh, but inevitably, um, uh, in the same way that exists currently with respect to capital standards or a, a range of other questions that exist currently uh, in federal uh, banking law or that would be enacted in federal banking law in the proposals that the committee is currently considering, certainly a lot of the detail would be left over to specific uh, application in the rulemaking process or in the so, supervisory process. <clears throat> so we can expect some significant further detail from the administration on exactly what it means by these proposals. Senator, I expect we would give you the same sort of language on these proposals <sighs> as we have on the other proposals that we've put forward at the same level of, of detail and specificity. Um, uh, it, we really think of it as uh, very similar in, in, in those regards. I if I may just interject. Yes, uh, go ahead. Senator, uh, bankers know what proprietary trading is and what it's not, and don't let them tell you anything different. Well, I, you know, I suspect that that uh, may be true to some extent, although I also suspect we could find different points of view among bankers as to exactly what we're talking about. But I think the real question here is what the law says, that's, uh, and that's going to be pretty critical. I I agree. The question is what the law says, and I don't think it's so hard to set forward the law that establishes the general principle, and that's going to have to be applied in difficult circumstances. The chairman spoke about the banks are all going to have a lot of 26-year-olds, have a lot of fancy mathematical training and all the rest. The supervisors need a few 28-year-olds <laughs> that have had uh, 
the same kind of trading. Well, I can say, and I understand the point you're making, but I can also tell you that it, I, I think that this committee and this Congress needs some level of specificity Absolutely. on which to act with regard to these proposals, because uh, if we get them wrong, I think that we could be doing as much damage as good. Um, Mr. Secretary, do you have any idea when we could get this detail? Uh, we're working on it hard, Senator Crapo. I think, you know, uh, in, in uh, short order, I, I don't want to define exactly how many days but, uh, or weeks, but it's going to be soon. We understand that you all are busy um, putting le uh, legislation together, and we want to make sure we get you language that can be timely in the context of the process that you've outlined. All right, thank you. I'd like to, in the short time I have remaining, just shift gears uh, to our GSEs, Fannie and Freddie. Uh, in January of 2010, and this is probably mostly for you, Mr. Secretary, uh, the CBO background paper uh, on budgetary treatment of Fannie and Freddie states, CBO believes it is appropriate and useful to policymakers to include their financial transactions alongside all other federal activities in the budget. Uh, the administration, however, uh, in its recent uh, budget submission, has not chosen to do that and has not chosen to bring the GSEs on budget. Could you explain to me why that is the case? Um, Senator, I think, uh, you know, the, the GSEs are not owned by the, the U.S. government. Uh, they are under the conservatorship of, of the FHFA. I think there's some amount of discretion that could be used. We tried to be transparent as we laid out uh, the financial circumstances of the GSEs. Certainly, uh, the FHFA has been transparent, I understand. Uh, they've sent a letter uh, up to the committee as, uh, as recently as today uh, laying that out. In our budget documents, I think uh, uh, there's been a, a, a high degree of transparency and whether, whether or not it was uh, consolidated onto the uh, balance sheet of the, of the federal government. Well, I, I understand that, but, you know, we're talking about the CBO's estimate of $291 billion, and that's a pretty big difference in the budget documents, depending on whether it's included or not. And, and the only thing the administration said in the proposed budget was that the administration continues to monitor the situation of GSEs closely and will continue to provide updates on considerations for longer-term reform of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac as appropriate. So I guess uh, a two-part question still. I mean, it, is the administration going to account for that $291 billion in its budget discussion this year? And secondly, when will we get details on what the administration's proposal for the GSE reform will, is going to be? Senator, again, on the, first, on the first question, we've laid out in our budget documents the transparency of the financial circumstances related to the GSEs. I think the question of consolidation is a question frankly, of whether we own the GSEs or, or don't. Uh, we don't own them. Uh, the FHA is, uh, FHFA is a conservator of them. So I think that was the judgment made there. In respect of the policy with respect to the GSEs going forward, obviously we're very focused on the stability of the housing markets. Uh, we are looking at uh, long-term uh, options for the GSEs. And uh, as we said in our, in our white paper, and when we have that, we will certainly be bringing forward uh, uh, our recommendation is clearly a critically important uh, set of things for us to be focused on, but want to do that in the context of stability in those markets and make sure that, especially at this critical moment, we don't do anything with respect to um, their long-term future that would perturb that stability. Well, thank you. I personally think that we need to see that $291 billion better reflected in the budget analysis that we're going through right now. and. And, uh, and I do look forward to continuing this discussion on the details of proposed GSE reform. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.